check battery was still good. So um, yeah, he would he would do a lot of things like um, he would always like I don't know because I guess like my mannerisms were a little bit weird I guess or maybe it is something the way I, I was how I was like posturing or my tone of voice. But he would always try and like he would get this look on his face when he was like trying to observe something. He was just like looking for something to laugh at and then he would like go to some people nearby sometimes it was like my other friends or like yeah it was like sometimes it was like the, the cool kids and he would just like um go up and like he would like whisper to them and then they would all look at me and start laughing and you know this happened like fucking like hundreds of times and sometimes it felt like he was even like turning the people who were my friends against me, making people lose respect for me. And he was just like actively doing everything in his power to like make people think I was like a joke or like a laughing stock. And sometimes it's not even like, I don't, I don't think it was not even like necessarily the things I was doing a lot of the time. Like sometimes it was just more him, the fact that he was saying it because he was like semi-popular, not the most popular, but like semi-popular. So he, he like people wanted to like laugh to like um I guess get on his good side and also like sometimes he was he was unfortunately a pretty funny guy so sometimes he he pointed things that were true but irregardless like some people who are like more chill like who are like on the nicer side like they would listen to what he had to say and they wouldn't find it funny but it's really more of like the average person who he would like get to laugh at me and um, like kind of made me feel like I was like awkward I was like um that there was something wrong with me like why is everybody laughing at me and um he would also um yeah he would also um yeah just do that and um kind of like oh like look at the way he's eating with his fork or like like do you hear how loud he's chewing I don't it's like stupid stuff like that but he'd always get people to laugh at me somehow or just like the way he said it or you'd say something like crack some joke to make compare me to something like insult me say I look like some like cartoon character like I don't know I don't know who like choose really weirdly but something like that or or how I was I looked like the hunchback of Notre Dame I'm just making that that's like a bad example but something like that you know just make these stupid examples and get everybody to laugh at me and like he would even do it from afar where I, I couldn't have an opportunity to respond because he would just like, I could see them, po I could see him pointing at me and then everybody looking and laughing at me. And I also know that he was probably talking a lot of shit behind my back because that's just the type of person he was. And, um, yeah. And this again happened over the course of like, you know, over like basically like, two or three years and at its worst and it still continued on to an extent even after because he eventually like joined my quote-unquote friend group and it almost felt like he followed me there not just because he wasn't cool enough to stick with the, re the really popular kids but also because he wanted someone to always be able to put down like he do he would like put me down in front of girls it seemed to like make himself seem funny have status which is I guess what most bullies do, but, um, yeah. And, um, I guess there's that and that really got to me. And aside from him calling me all these names and everything. And I think the worst part for me, um, was that he would all, we were in the same band class. So, um, I guess after band class, he would always try and get me to go to the practice rooms with him and um because he said he wanted to like try learning like my like instrument which was the baritone and i agreed i guess because i thought it was kind of funny it was like i thought it was something again that would like deepen our quote-unquote friendship and um so i just went with him and um he would like um yeah, so he, we would go to like the practice rooms and he would, I'm just, he would just always like pressure me into doing things like let him, like, I guess, yeah, he would tell me to do things like, like wash the mouthpiece in the bathroom and then like, I don't know, like 
do all these things for him. And I would do them because I was like a pushover, like a massive pushover and didn't really know any better. But um, eventually he, um, yeah, but anyways, no. So like he um, went, uh, and so we were in the practice rooms and like we were playing this instrument and he'd try and get me to teach him how to play the instrument, which is not bad. But then like at the same time he would, I feel like that's when the verbal abuse got really bad, especially like when it was the two of us alone, like he would start to tell me things like, he would just call me like, like uh, one thing he would do, he was like, he would always try and like tell me that I was an inferior human being that, you know, like no one would ever like me. No, no girls would ever like want to talk to me because I was ugly, that I was stupid, even though um, in my mind, I knew I was smarter than him, but he would just keep saying it that I was stupid, that no no one would ever like me. Like, like he's like, so he would say like this, like, yo, dude, do you know that? Do you know that nobody will probably ever like you because you're stupid? And it's like, and I was like, what? It's like, yeah, like you're fucking stupid, and you don't, um, and you know, you're ugly too, and that's why. And, and girls think you're stupid. You know, I talked to to her to so and so, and she thinks you're ugly too, and and all these things, and he would say that to me, and then he'd also at the same time, you know, use very colorful language, like, like, you fucking faggot, you like, like, you're, like, you're a bitch, you know, that, and like, I was like, what, and it's like, and, and then, and then, I don't know, I don't know why I, I honestly, like, dealt with it for so long, I just thought that it was just part of our dynamic, because I would, I would say stuff back to him, too, but definitely not on the level, like, I would just say, like, oh, you're a fucking faggot, like, you're, you're, you're fucking, like, uh, you're fucking cunt. Like I would say that kind of stuff to him too, but it was more like in retaliation. He would always instigate. And, um, it's like whenever he was like, um, yeah. And it's like, if I said something, um, if I said something like to piss him off or that bothered him, he would kind of like give me this threatening look, like it's like stare me down like that. And keep in mind that this guy was like twice, not twice, maybe like one and a half times my size. He was definitely, I've caught up to him in terms of size now, but at the time I was like really skinny, really, really scrawny. So he definitely had like the physical advantage over me. Over me. So if you guys are wondering like why I didn't just like beat the crap out of him, because some of you think I'm a Chad apparently, or like I'm, I'm like ripped or Jack. Like I was really... I was like skinny fat in high school, like really bad quote unquote frame. So like, yeah, he would always like, yeah, give me his threatening stare. And although like he wouldn't like outright beat the crap out of me, um, when he gave me that stare and I didn't, I still pissed him off. Eventually he would either get back at me even like worse by like, spending the whole day basically trying to make people like laugh at me or like talking crap about me and just like ignoring me when I asked him something or like just like really like passive aggressive and also like talking crap or sometimes you know he didn't like beat the crap out of me but he would all he would often like shove me or like push me and like maybe like press me like like shove me aside from like a locker room or like just like or like just like pin me down not too hard like on the ground but just like a little bit like like that or something or like I don't know like like maybe like mess with my hair and kind of like physically dominate me basically okay it kind of sounds like I'm talking about some like me too stuff like physically dominate but it's it's more like the technical sense of the word like he would just like do all this crap to me and um you know, F with my hair and like, like, like stretch my clothes, I guess, even though I don't really have any good clothes, but still, and like, you know, like dump stuff on me sometimes. Sometimes he would, you know, he would like, he's like, he would be like, yo, check this out. And then he would just like, like punch my arm. And then, you know, it was just like, it wasn't like beating the crap out of me, but like sometimes he punched me hard enough to where like my arm bruised, especially because I was like skinny. And he would also like, um, yeah, just like do all that stuff. Like, so it's like never enough to be considered 
classical bullying where like I could go to the principal and like get him in trouble because my school is pretty sensitive about violence, but it's almost like he kind of knew um, just how far he could go so that he wouldn't get in trouble or that it would just be dismissed as being like, you know, just teasing or like being playing rough or whatever. And um, yeah, and, or, and also he was always trying to like manage my limits, like trying to see like what I could take so that he always just put me like just to the edge. Like, yeah, he would hit me or like push me like a little bit. Like one time he pushed me while we were like at some some one of like our mutual friend's house and then like I, like my foot like hit some ledge and then I, I like couldn't walk for like a week because like my heel was like swollen but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to look like a pussy in front of him because if I did bring it up he would say things like oh like, like stop being a pussy like like dude why such a faggot like it's, it's not even that bad like and like and then or like um when I did something you just like dude like he'd act like all disgusted and then he would also like look at like give me this look sometimes as if he were like disgusted at me like 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 dude what the like what the are you doing and it's like it's like everything i but it's like nothing that i did would not elicit some sort of negative response and for the longest time i always thought that it was something wrong with me and not that this guy was just being like a douche on purpose. Like part of me knew that, but over time when this keeps happening to you, it really adds up and it starts to like warp your sense of self, especially if you keep putting up with it. And um, also the worst thing he would do was that, yeah, while, while we were in like the practice rooms, like he would say all this stuff to me, but then he would just, he would keep going and keep saying like, like, dude, you're a faggot, you know that? You're a faggot, like, you're a fucking loser, you're a fucking faggot, like, you're a bitch, you know that? Shut the fuck up, and I'd say, like, shut the fuck up, you fucking fag, like, you're fucking, you're a fucking stupid little bitch, you skinny arm fuckwad, like, I bet you just, honestly, you're just a massive fucking cum dumpster who fucking deserves to die and get hit by a fucking car, you fucking faggot ass fag, faggot fuck. Like, go fuck yourself honestly you fucking piece of shit like like honestly honestly your mother probably wanted you boarded and and like and guess what when you die i'm probably gonna rape your mother you fucking little faggot homo fag fucking cum dumpster fuck wad like and like and, and then he would say stuff like that sometimes it was outright name calling but sometimes it, would, it was also stuff like like oh like like dude like you know you know you're a fucking inferior human being to me right like you know you know you're utterly useless and not good at anything right like it's like you know that right like right it's like fucking answer me and then i would just kind of keep quiet trying to hold the tears back in sometimes and um yeah and um he would just say all this like stuff to me like Obviously, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what he said because it was like years ago, but it was like pretty much that to that extent. And um, sometimes I'd say like, oh, fuck you. Or like, I would say like, I would say stuff back, but it was just like, I was so defeated and exhausted and tired of it. And I just didn't say anything. And eventually it sort of stopped when one day while we were in the practice rooms, I kind of just like, on the verge of tears, I just like got up and like started like ignoring him, like packing myself. He's like, dude, but, like where the fuck are you going? He's like, and then I just like, and then I just kept like, I was really trying not to cry at the time. And then he was like, it's like, dude, come on, come on. I was just joking. I was just joking. It's just a joke. And that's the thing. Like he would say all this stuff, but then he would also like, he would be nice to me like 10% of the time. And sometimes he would actually be funny and we would have like things to laugh about. And that's what hurt most is that he really was at least cool to me, maybe like a little bit of the time. And he's actually a cool guy. But at the same time, he was just such a dick to me. And it really took me a while because we would, we would laugh about stuff too. We would, we had some, positive shared memories that would, I guess would technically make his friends like laughing over funny YouTube videos. Cause 
thing is we also had a fairly similar sense of humor. Um, so we had like a lot of that going, but at the same time, it's like, he would just do all this crap. And I would just assume it was part of our like dynamic, almost like our friendship. It was like unique to us. So I just went along with it until one day that day, I just said enough is enough. And then I kind of walked out and I just stopped going with him to like the practice room and stuff. And yeah, but it's really just the way this guy made me feel was that, you know, I felt completely and utterly helpless. Like I couldn't do anything. I couldn't say anything. Or if I said anything back to him, which I sometimes could get away with or like out beat him he would just keep at it or he ignore me or he would like make it worse for me by talking crap behind my back making other people laugh at me and all the while i was always doing him favors because i thought he was my friend and he would always say all this hurtful stuff to me and this happened over the course of like years right so just imagine this happening like just being in like basically like a toxic toxic like friendship i guess like a toxic a toxic like I guess relationship and like yeah and like obviously this probably count sounds kind of sus but like like this this guy was basically my friend like and yeah so yeah and like just man like I don't know if I should be talking about this on YouTube to be honest because I'm really you know I don't know if it's good to be vulnerable over the internet, but yeah. Anyways, he did all the stuff and I just felt helpless that I couldn't, like, like I couldn't do anything back to him. And he just, man, it really messed me up. And, and um, I'll talk about the next video, but um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else he did. I guess another thing. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. He just made me feel like really scared a lot of the time, like part of me wanted to hang out with him on the off chance that he was actually being chill. But the vast majority of the, majority of the time, I felt like I was always walking on eggshells and or always trying to have to like have my guard up to say crap back to him to the best, as least as long as I could like help it. And also I just felt really vulnerable and scared and as if like i couldn't do anything this person and um yeah i guess i guess at some i guess i don't know i'll talk about, yeah i'll i'll get into what i learned about the experience next video but um yeah i think that's pretty much what i'll have to say i know it's not like the worst example of bullying out there but keep in mind that this guy entered my friend group after 10th grade and was basically around and he was still doing like maybe 30 to 40 percent of what he was doing to me when he was like my quote-unquote full-time like bully and um yeah um i just i wish i knew better at the time i wish someone i just wish someone would have just told me that i didn't have to you know stick up with this crap some of my friends other friends tried to tell me, but they only told me like once, like you don't have to go with them, but they didn't really like try and sit me down and let it get through my head. And I just thought, cause I don't know, I always, in some sense, I wanted this person's validation because they seemed like he, he was like pretty cool, like semi-popular, I guess. And he's also actually like funny. So it was like, um, yeah make fun of the way I dress, make fun of everything, make fun of everything about me. Never anything good to say about me, pretty much, always. And then, yeah, I can't really, I'm trying to think, there's so many other things that I'm probably not mentioning that he didn't, I just can't recall it because it's just way too many things, way too many examples, way too many stories. Think not hundreds, like thousands of times that he's done, that he's treated me like crap basically. And I just put up with it. And part of me is also really angry at myself for not knowing any better. Of course, I've forgiven myself to an extent because that was just,
the place I was at mentally at the time, but I just wish I knew better. And I think that's all I have to say about my book, about the person who bullied me. Um, this is really not a joking matter for me. So I would really appreciate if, uh, you know, people didn't give me shit for this. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, obviously it's going to fucking backfire because it's the fucking internet and people are honestly just fucking cunts. Sorry, I'm just being bitter because all these memories have kind of brought up the bitterness in me. And I know I don't, I'm not like super emotional right now, but I remember when I talked about this to my therapist or like my aunt who was kind of acted as my therapist, I pretty much broke down in tears, in tears while sharing this to her. I think maybe I'm not crying right now because I have already sort of like brought it up and have sort of maybe confronted that memory of what happened, realized just like the extent of how wrong I was treated over that period of time. But, you know, it definitely left me scarred, definitely affected me in numerous, in numerous ways that I'll talk about in a, in another, in a fucking hell, in another video because I'd, I've probably been talking for a long time now. Anyways, um, I hope you guys found that relatable maybe, or I don't know, hopefully didn't enjoy that, but found it useful somehow. Anyways, uh, hit the like and subscribe button for more content like this. And this is Comfy Neat uh, signing out.